making the reverse bar shoe for the Mustad Championship Forging at the American Farriers Association Convention 2021 in Arlington, Texas. It's going to be a reverse bar shoe punched for six E4 nails. That's Mustad E4 nails. So let's get on and make the shoe. Keeping it straight when we're bumping. Move around at the hammer just to localize it, and then one more bumping heat, and we'll be good. Okay, one more bump, and we'll have enough material. Localizing it with a rounder hammer. Now what I'll do is I'll give it a little bit of a reverse bend. That makes it easier to pull this out. Now I got another bit of a heat, but I'll pull that out and put my mass lot or my heel frog plate in now. Just take my round of my hammer. And forge in, pulling it down like a frog plate. Localize it a little bit. Localize it. Keep it fairly narrow at this point. Well, we can see we've got a mass slot. We've got it coming into the section. So it's not like a normal mass lock. This one's allowed to come into the section. And now what we've got to do is we've got to make a heel bend. But what I'm focusing on is thinking about it like an equilibrium toe bend. Now I'll think about it like a toe bend. I'll turn it. I'll push it together over the horn using the mass slot to hold it. A little flatten, get it symmetrical. Now we can put on a chamfered edge or an equilibrium toe. Now when I do this, I put my hammer hand below the level of the anvil, so I'm hitting more into it than down onto it. If you're hitting it down, it doesn't give you a cleaner line and as thin an outside edge. Get a little bit of a, we'll flatten it. We're about halfway, but you can see the lines forming. I'll work the edge, clean up the back, turn it other way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my hammer into the front. So I'll put it there, put my hammer on it, and I'll strike it with another hammer. Okay? Just to make the radius a little bit wider. I'll put my hammer there. And just nice clean lines. Just put it in again. Let's blend it one more time. I'm just going to give it my final clean up. Around the back. A nice flatten. What we've got is basically the heel is the same as the toe of the equilibrium. So now what we want to do is we just put heel, basically we're putting heels on the end of the branch. So similar to a hunter heel, pointed. And then we'll just draw the branch and flatten it. We don't want to make the branches too narrow, but we do want to get a little bit more length out of them. 
I forge my heel to center, straight line, turn it over. Forge it down, back to center. And there we got our heel done. Now we can draw a branch a little bit. Give it a good flatten. Make the steel look like it's new. Don't leave hammer marks in it. Clean up the heel while I'm here. We got one branch done, now we're going to do the other branch. Forging my heel to center, forge the outside to center, a little bit of a slope, forge it back to center, nice clean straight lines, that's what it's showing. Again, let's draw the branch just a little bit, not much, but we need to just draw it just a little bit for me. Give it a little thin down. Clean up my heel. Clean up my heel. I should say my toe, but feels like a heel. And now there we are. What we've got to think about now is the toe quarters are a little bit straight. So when I bend it, I bend it a little bit like a hind shoe. I'll bend it like a hind shoe, so I'll hold it, the toe quarter, and make sure that's a straightish bend. I'll hem it, I'll work up the horn, on the horn, and down the horn to hem it. Make sure your hemming is clean. The cleaner that is, the better. I'm going to take my narrow fuller, I fuller quite deep with it, but it'll be my narrow fuller. Think about where we're going to stop. Nice hard stop. Go in about halfway. It's not how hard you hit it, it's the more you overlap it, it'll give you the cleanness. Work the outside edge. Up the horn, on the horn, down the horn, work the outside corner. I flatten the hoof side always first, clean my anvil. Not too hard, I'm not trying to squash the material, I'm trying to flatten the material. Flattening is what you want. Squashing is not what you want. I'm going to clean up the corners just a little bit more. Clean up the heel. A little bit cold now to finish, so take an appropriate heat to finish your fullering and then you do your nail hole. So it doesn't need to be bright. So you could put it back in the fire and just bring it up to a dull red heat so you've got an appropriate heat to finish the job. Appropriate temperature, we'll finish our fullering. Not too hard, lots of little hammer blows that polish it rather than driving it in fast and that causes the fullering to widen and spread. And we don't want the shoe just spreading out. Stamp it. I'll level it. I can see my coarseness. I don't want to pitch them more or less. <laughs> Touch my heel. Just lightly with a stamp.
Put your leg. Edges. You go through my nail holes one more time. Now I'm going to do the last branch. Okay, bend it a little bit like a hind now, keep that. Almost like a heel quarter on a hind. Hem it. Up the horn, the quarter, over the horn, and away. That really reinforces the shape. I give it a little bit of a flatten. I'll mark it. Now take your time marking. Going in about half the thickness of the material, or halfway with your fuller in. Getting the clean lines in it. Work the outside edge. Up to the quarters, over the quarters, away from the quarters. Work the corner, flatten the hoof side, not squashing it, just enough to flatten the surface. Same with the ground side, flatten it. Okay, so there we just need one more fullering heat. And we'll finish our fullering. Nice clean stop end, get into the corner, around. Thinking about the size of the nail. Stamp it. You got your clip spacing. Where your heel nail's gonna go. Have a look at it, see your coarseness, because you can always pitch it more or less right now. Stamp to the anvil, not into the anvil, that's a really bad thing to do. And virtual. Level it. I'll just give it a little pritchel again. And I think about how far I'm driving my pritchel in so it goes in the same distance on every one. I'm not just hitting it as hard as I can. Now I'm going to clip it, but I'm just going to localize the branch a little bit when I clip it so I don't get as much twisting as I'm clipping really close to the end. So I've just localized the heat a little bit. I hit into the corner, being careful not to go out to my nail holes, make the base of my clip, walk my clip up, you get marks in it, take the marks out and then bring it up again, don't leave big marks in your clip. Level behind it, set your clip, there's one done. Now we're going to get the other clip done. So I'm going to start with that clip, hitting it into the corner. Keeping my left hand pulled so it doesn't roll. Set my base. It is setting your base before you start drawing your clip. 
Then draw your clip part of the way. I've got some marks in it. Polish the marks out. Then come up at it again. Polish the marks out. Get a level. And we'll last our heel. So it's very much a point. I point it, point it. Right down. Now I see it in the picture. And last my branch. Polish the, the surface. Get a really nice finish on our bar, so I'm almost draw filing it. And so even with a rasp, you can get a really nice finish. That's it. You can see the finish coming into it. And that's even with just a rasp, it's not even any sandpaper or anything. I'll just turn it so I can get into the middle. Again, draw file it, get a really nice finish coming on it without any. This is just using a Excel legend and you can see now just doing that, if I give it a little bit of a wire, br wire brush up, we've got a nice finishing coming on it. I just need to rasp the other branch. Final clean up now. Check our size. Yeah. Yeah. So we're about 16 long, but I can shorten that with a bit of rasping very easily. There we can see. I finished open toe bar shoe and I rim. We can see the proportions about the same. So both about number one.